Sports card hobby family, we have a double header today, and I know what you're probably thinking. Man, Dustin, that is a little bit over the top. Half of sports card hobby shops, card shops, are going to be gone in the next 18 months. Sorry, guys, but one of the other channels that I watch religiously, Rudy at Alpha Investments, he kind of said it best. He actually had a video, throw up, Frank, throw up the picture, where he just put, I think, like aliens and bankruptcy in the title because that's the only way that people are going to click on it. Sadly, that is really kind of the world that we live in, and it's across all industries, across all things. It's just the way that it works. What I can promise you is even if the title looks a little bit dramatic, I will give you an even-handed, well-rounded take on the particular subject. <laughs> Before I get started, big thanks to today's video sponsor, ComC.com, doubleheader ComC. You're home for buying, selling, and flipping all the hottest trading cards, the consignment marketplace with over 32 million cards from baseball's biggest stars like Shohei Ohtani. Tani, Aaron Judge, and Mookie Betts to Marvel favorites like Spider-Man, Thor, and Captain America. ComC has something for every type of collector, so don't waste any more time. Hit the link down below in the video description and in the pinned comments. It will take you there. Have fun on ComC.com. Also, quick shout out to the Blitz of Slab Mag orders that we have gotten through the affiliate link. If you're looking for protection for your slab and also UV protection for autographs. That's the big thing. You don't want light or sunlight getting to your autographs and fading them through the slab. Slab Mags helps take care of that for you. There is an affiliate link in the pinned comments as well. All right, let's get to the topic at hand. This is actually, I think, a pretty serious thing. I know the, the title is a little bit dramatic, but I really do believe that a lot of sports card hobby shops are going to struggle. And the reason why is because of the stuff I've just seen recently. Let's start with the first headline here. And this isn't necessarily why other hobby shops will close. I actually think this person can help hobby shops that might be on the fence to get better, grow, and all those things. Scott Daniel with Underdog Collectibles has left Underdog. They will still stay in business, still operate, um, but he is going to Fanatics to be the director of hobby shops for Fanatics. And so his job, essentially, he's got 18 years of combined sales marketing experience, and then he's also grown, built out a successful hobby shop. Is he is going to go around and help hobby shops make sure that everything is on the up and up, probably check in, but then also just strategize and figure out different ways to bring in business. And this is kind of interesting. So we had talked about Fanatics having a team that goes out and looks and just kind of checks out what's going on. Because keep in mind, allocation is going to be going out to certain parties and probably not others. You know, you're seeing the distribution channels that have historically been in place are a changing. It's probably not going to be like that. It's probably going to be directly from Fanatic Stops to card shops, to hobby shops. And then it's also going to be, you know, direct to consumers. And that's probably it. I don't see there being a lot of distribution levels. Uh, Mike, Michael Rubin has said that many, many times. Look at how many different layers there are between the collector and the product. He is trying to eat in that pie like Pac-Man. He wants that. And so now we know who is going to be heading up this, this project. The director of hobby shops, Scott Daniel. Now, speaking of hobby shops... And again, this is something that just kind of shocks me, to be honest. On IG, I think it was Jeff Wilson where I saw this. This is, There's a new shop called Giant Sports Cards. Frank, roll their promo reel from IG. GPs, join us on September 9th for the Giant Sports Cards Grand Opening Party. We'll be celebrating the love of the game with over $5,000 in giveaways and the chance to meet Falcons cheerleaders Freddie Falcon and Patrick Renna. So collectors from rookies to veterans, mark your calendar for September 9th from 1 to 5 p.m. Conveniently located in Alpharetta off 400 in Windward. Giant sports cards where the love of the game comes to life. When I watched this, I was just thinking, man, card shops have dramatically changed from 30 years ago and probably from five years ago, frankly. I mean, this grand opening had Falcons cheerleaders. It had one of the guys from the Sandlot was there. Um, you know, and you just look at the store there's money being spent on these stores, some serious cash being spent. You see Ryan Card Collector 2 building out his store, and he actually just, just moved his store. You can see that people are really taking it seriously as far as trying to upgrade because they, I think they understand that, look, they need to get product. They need to get that new product, continue having success partly. I know that's not everything. If you look at kind of Rob Burbank Cards, 
he's one of those examples where he's just built such a massive inventory that if Topps was like, you know what, screw you, we're not sending you any new product, he'd be like, okay, well, we'll just carry on the way that we're going to do things anyway. You know, but there's not a lot of shops like Burbank. You know, Burbank's just been doing it for long enough and they've built up that huge inventory. Their, their business model is not reliant on them having all the new product. That's great. That's probably a bonus, but they don't run brakes there or anything like that. But when I see like this giant sports cards, what it tells me is that there is not going to be 50 card shops in, you know, one city or one town, maybe in a city, depending on what size we're talking about. It is definitely going to be kind of the cream of the crop, I think, are really going to rule. It's going to be the companies that really put a lot of effort and money into their shop and their operation in general. It's going to all have to be on the up and up. And you can just kind of tell this is part of the transformation of Fanatics coming in. Now, how they're going to handle it, how they're going to govern this as far as hobby shops getting getting product and that sort of thing is going to be really interesting to watch, you know, because I'm sure there's going to be news at some point where there's probably going to be fairly well-known people in the hobby that are not getting they're not getting new product. They didn't get it for whatever reason. And it might be because the store just did not pass muster and it might be long time companies. And I remind you too of the national where you've got a lot of you know older dealers that have been there for a long time. There was a lot of, I know, you know, selling off of booths to other people and this sort of thing. And I think the new people that are taking over the national, I don't really see that happening. I think the national is also going to be, you know, a show that changes a little bit as this new ownership comes in. But gone are the card shops of old, man. I mean, gone are the, you know, the guys smoking cigarettes in the back going back 30 years. Now, granted, that was 30 years ago where you could still smoke cigarettes in restaurants. But if you're going to have a shop that's not kind of these one of these new age shops and you're going to have a you're going to have to have a totally different business model and you're going to have to really be able to build relationships in your community and not be reliant on new product or just reliant on tops. You know, you're going to have to be able to run a business without getting that new product or not counting on it necessarily. But yeah, this is my prediction. I think that probably more than half of sports card shops, that LCS that we're all used to talking about, I think that half of them are gone in 18 months, 18 months to two years, because I think they're going to be taken over by larger, nicer, you know, better operated stores. It's now all of a sudden, this has become a very competitive space for sports card shops. You would think these are kind of like, this is a sleepy old hobby with sleepy old card shops. No, it isn't. Not anymore. Now it's big business. It's an industry. It's it's grown quite a bit. Even with the COVID money gone and all that stuff, there is still a tremendous amount of interest. There's still a lot of capital being put into this market in different ways. And so we will have to see how it shakes out. But Giant Sports Cards, check them out. I thought, wow, that's an incredible looking store. I don't remember card shops looking like that. Going back 30 years or even three or four years, it's pretty wild. All right, guys, stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later. Thank you.